right, good evening everyone. It's a Sunday night, it's the first day of fall and it's all rainy and kind of cool here. It is September 22nd of the year 24 and I'm happy that all my allergens are going to start going away <laughs> in Jesus name. And since it's a Sunday night, we'll continue on with the book of John. Tonight we're going to look at John 19, 25 through 27. And I'm going to read those. And uh, I say tonight, let's just keep praying for our country. Because, I mean, we're going into this crazy election season. There's usually some type of craziness that happens in October. And uh, September has been quite quite a month already, and so has ever since july it's been you know we should probably really pray for trump's safety um it was uh representative matt gates who came out and says that there are five assassin teams that have been hired that are in the united states to kill that man yeah <laughs> so we should take that serious <laughs> that's pretty serious so and obviously, obviously, he has somebody who, who uh, inside of his his uh, group, who's leaking information. So, so we really need to, uh, really, really need to pray. And we should probably pray for Putin to keep his head cool. And uh, and uh, and. Uh, there's reports that he knows God, and I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know the man, but we'll pray for his salvation, and we'll pray that God keeps his head cool as he deals with what he's dealing with. And just these wars end before they escalate in World War Three. Amen. All right. Because you know what? One person died in history, and ever since that death, no one else should have. No one should have to die. And that's what I believe. Amen. One man paid up the price so that we won't have to deal with death. And here it is. We are now in John 19, 25 through 27. It says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When he therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Let's pray. Lord, we just plead your blood over us. And Lord, we pray for our country. And like we prayed this morning, to return to being a godly country. And Lord, for all the inside jobs and all the evil that's going on and all the stuff that's starting to be exposed, Lord, right now, even though the entertainment world is starting to get exposed again, and Lord, that's good, but I know that the devil's raging. So, Lord, we just pray that our country will return to a godly nation. We plead your blood over Trump, and we plead your blood over every person, Lord, who's a politician right now. And, Lord, we don't want anyone to be killed. Lord, we ask that you lead him and guide him. And, Lord, we pray for... Uh, Vladimir Putin, Lord, if uh, he's starting to turn to Christianity and realize that that's good for society, Lord, if that's all true, praise you, Lord. And if it's not some type of crazy psyop, Lord, we just we do. We pray for that man's salvation. We pray, Lord, that he'll be smart in everything he does. Lord, we'll pray that NATO will cool their jets and try and stop trying to push us into World War III. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that Zelensky will agree on peace. And, Lord, we pray for Jerusalem to have peace, and we pray for the Palestinian Christians, and we pray, Lord, that all the truth that's happening there will come out, and we pray that that land will have peace, as your word says we're supposed to pray. And, Lord, we pray that more, Christ more Palestinians will find Jesus. And we also pray that every Jew out there, Lord, will find you too, because you are the Messiah they've been missing for 2,000 years. Lord, we pray that this word that we're looking at tonight will go forth, and actually change what needs to be changed in this dark and dying world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of, of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, 
there's another woman, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. There's four women there. All right. There's four. Yeah. So some people read that and they, they only see two or three or whatever. So our scholar believes there's four. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. So now there stood, or standing is how our Greek scholar puts it. This is a verb, but now it's in the pluperfect tense. <laughs> So, this is one of the, there's four past tense in Greek. <laughs> and this is, this one, this one means the story, um, I can't think today. It means, basically means the backstory of what happened. <laughs> it's kind of what that tense means. <laughs> it's, the what was going on to the side while the main narrative was playing out. That's what that it, it's it's crazy. Anyways, so just take it as a past tense. You know, it's like a, a movie you're watching. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, this is what's going on, right? Or okay. Meanwhile, back at the cross, off to the side, this is happening. That's that's the best way to take it with the with the narrative we're looking at. So this verse is showing us that there are four women. More could have been there, which is Mary, the mother of Jesus, her sister. Some people thought maybe her, the sister is Mary, the wife of Clopas, but our scholar argues, why would you have two sisters named Mary? Yeah, so, so he, doesn't, he doesn't take it. We've, we think that Mary, the mother of Clopas, was somebody else. The Mary, the mother of Clopas, could have been... Mary, who's married to Clopas, you know, or Clopas was a person who was known in the first church, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's ways of taking that. Uh, I don't know if we ever knew who, uh, who the father was of the Zebedee uh, b boys, but she's there too, according to the synoptic, so that could be her, and, you know, James and John's uh, dad was Clopas, you know, who knows? Um, it's a mystery. It's one of those things in the Bible no one can just give you a straight answer about because we don't know and we weren't there. But it's interesting. And then, of course, we all know who Mary Magdalene is. Now, Mary Magdalene is going to play a big role here. And do you guys realize John has never said anything about her? He said nothing about her. All of a sudden, he brings up that she was there. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, I know Mary Magdalene was. All four Gospels confirm that she was there. All right. Who has not been mentioned in this Gospel yet will have a big part in the resurrection. Amen. So if you go to 21 and 2. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, and it was still dark, and saw the, tomb had been take, the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and I do not know where they have laid him. And the narrative with her goes on. If you go to verse 11, But Mary stood outside of the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels, uh, white sitting on one, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And when, and when they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, Because they have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. All right. And Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried away him, if you carried him away, tell, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Now, this is my favorite, one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It goes on, doesn't it? <laughs> she turned to him and said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher. Jesus said, do not cling to me. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not ascended to my father, but go to my brethren. And say to them, I have ascended to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that she had spoken these things 
these things to her. All right. So she has a big role coming up. But you know what? John has not talked about her at all in his gospel yet. But all of a sudden, here she is. Interesting, isn't it? So it's like he's like, yeah. Okay, this is where Mary Kit comes in. <laughs> this is where this woman comes in. But I got to agree with the, the, the scholar. This section is about Mary, the mother of Jesus. All right? Because when we get to the next two verses, this part is, is about her. But it's like John went ahead and mentioned her because he's going to let you know some things about what happened with her in the resurrection. So he brings her into the story. Of course, if you know the synoptics, you know who she is. And, uh, and uh, she has, and, and back to Mary, the mother of Jesus, she has been in this gospel already. All right, so if you go all the way back to chapter 2, we know who she is. We know she's mentioned in this gospel. Verses 3 and 5. And when they had run out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They had no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Right? And then she disappears for a while. Then we come back to 12. And after this, uh, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother, there she is, his brothers and his disciples. And they did not stay there many days. All right. And then she'll pop up again in verse 642. This is where the Jews just talk about her. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? All right. Now that's important. We'll talk about Joseph here in a little bit. Whose father it is, uh, and, and whose who's whose father and mother we know. So there she is. They mention her. How is it then he says, I have come down from heaven? So so she's going to get mentioned later on in the gospel. And now here it is, a big part that she plays in the gospel of John. All right. Moving on from there, this gospel lets us know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was standing by the cross. All right. Now the other gospels, they'll talk about how they were off from a distance or they were, they were nearby, you know, it makes it sound like they were a stone throw away. But John is the one that lets us know that there was, a, uh, there was a time when she was by the cross, and he actually had some interaction with her and the, God, and, the, and the disciple whom he loved. A lot is going to be talked about that guy here in a second. We take it as John because we just go with tradition, but the modern-day scholars have a challenging thing, and we'll look at it. All right, which the other three mentioned that there were, there were women there who followed him, but at a distance. Now, Luke just says this in Luke 23, 49. We'll just look at Luke one time in this because he just, he just wraps it all up. He just wraps it all up, you know, in the way he wraps it all up. Okay. He just says this, And the whole crowd who came together... To that site, seeing what had been done, I'll uh, beat their breasts, that's verse 8, and return home. Here's the verse. All of his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and watched these things. That's the only mention that Luke gives about the women who were there. All right. Now, as we move forward, and we're going to look at Matthew and Mark. There are some things they say that's very interesting. One can see that Mary, the mother of Jesus in Mark and Matthew, if we understand that, that Joseph, Josie is a substitute for Joseph. You're like, okay, what's that about? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go to Mark. Now, everything I'm about to show you guys, no one knows if this is true. It's just... A lot of scholarly guess about what's really going on here, who, who these people are, who they possibly could be, what's going on. Here it is, Mark 15, 40 through 41. You know what? The words of a, a Bible uh, uh, professor, a Bible college professor came to me, his words that he would teach us. There are things in the Bible we don't really know for sure. 
And there's people who do know. You know where they're at? They're dead. <laughs> so his whole point is, you can, there's some things you can argue about, speculate about, put all sorts of time and energy into, but you're never going to know until you get to heaven. <laughs> do you guys know that Jesus loves you and died for your sins? That's the thing to know. All right. That that is true. Don't mess with that. All right. That much we can totally for sure and absolutely get. Mark fifteen, forty through forty one. There also there were also women looking from afar, among whom Mary Magdalene, there she is, Mary the mother of James the Less and Josie and uh Salome. All right. You guys see Jos Josie? Joseph? I don't know how to say that. It's very possible that could be shortened, a short version for Joseph. It's possible. So is she Mary, the, 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 the wife of Joseph? Or was there a Joseph Jr. in uh, Jesus' siblings? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we're going to see that uh, the Zebedee mother was there as well. And... Uh, yeah, who knows how many women were actually there. Going on, who followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other, look at that, many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. So there was more than four. Now, John brings up four. And that's interesting. Why did he bring up four? There's four soldiers, now there's four women, and then all of a sudden... John, the disciple whom he loves, just pops up. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. So, you can make what you want to of this, and the scholar will agree with what I'm saying, and, and, I'm, and I'm using his stuff. We don't know. We don't know what to make of all this. You can speculate all sorts of things. Go to verse 47 of Mark 15, and you also get this. And Mary Magdalene, there she is again, and the mother of... And Mary, the mother of Josie, there's that word, there's that name again, it could be Joseph, observed where he was laid. It's very possible his mom was involved in the whole entire thing that happened. Going to uh, 16.1. Now, now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and uh, S Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. What's Mark doing here? Is he just kind of using different brother names of uh, Jesus to say, and, you know, Jesus' mother was there? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe these are just people that, you know, the, the original, I'm sure, this, this much, here's a 100% thing to understand. The original uh, uh, hearers of this knew who they were. <laughs> we don't. Too much time has passed. But here we go. Let's let's look at Matthew's account. Maybe maybe we we'll, can make sense of this. Maybe it's going to stay a mystery. <laughs> so let's go to uh, Matthew. Matthew 27, 55 through 56. Then we'll look at 61 and 28, 1. All right, here we go. So Matthew 27, 55. And many women followed Jesus from Galilee and ministered to him were there looking from afar, see, so Matthew paints it that they were like a you know, stone throw, throw away or something. Among who were Mary Magdalene, here it is, Mary the mother of James and Josie, there's that again, and now the and now the mother of the Zebedee sons. We know who they are, right? James and John, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, the one who he loved, yeah. Yeah, it was those, yeah. Yep. So, John, who we believe wrote this. Yep, we believe that's that that could be that that's that's the mother there. Let's jump down to uh, sixty-one. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, which Mary was at. Yeah. Maybe it's Mary Ann who comes to our church. Maybe she was there. No, <laughs> I don't think it was Mary Ann. All right. All right, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. Okay, 
might be Jesus' mother, and Matthew just expects you to figure that out. Jump down to 28.1. And after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week uh, began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. So it's very possible that Mary, the mother of Jesus, or whoever this other Mary is, you know, it's very possible that that could be Mary, the mother of Jesus, and she was involved in the whole entire scene from the crucifixion to the burial. But when we go back to John, we do know that it was Mary who went to the tomb. And she had a big part to play in the book of John. So John brings her in here. Now, we'll stick, up, we'll stick with Matthew and Mark here for a little bit. All right. And his brother, and the brother, and he is, and he, yeah, Josie could be a sub substitute for Joseph, go along with that thought, thought and he is a brother, he, he, he can be a brother, you can see this, that he could be a brother of Jesus. So let's go to Mark 6. Mark 6, 3. Is this not the carpenter's son of, of Mary? Well, we know who that is. That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. And brothers James and Josie. See, look, there it is. There's that name. Judas and Simon. All right. Or Jude. We believe that James and Jude were the ones who wrote the books that we have in the New Testament towards the end. They were brothers. They were Half brothers of Jesus. Yeah, both of them. Their 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 daddy was Joseph. Maybe Josie is like Junior. <laughs> Could be. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Sorry, I got no absolutes. It's just interesting stuff to look at. All right. Let's go to Matthew uh, thirteen fifty five. It's the parallel of this. Oh, come on, tabs, work for me. Here we go. 1355 says, Oh, what did I do? I did something here. I did something here. Oh, here we go. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not Mary? Is not his mother called Mary? We know exactly what they're saying there. And his brother, James, Joseph, Joseph, Simon, and Judah. See, it's the exact same. So, that, there's some evidence. Moving on with the notes, it is possible be, that because Jesus uh, Jesus called other people, uh, uh, other people, he called other people's people his mother and brothers. So, We'll look at Matthew 12 and, and Mark 3 here in a second. Let's just go on with that thought so I can make sense to you, to you. In these Gospels, these writers distance her from his ministry as the mother of others. But in the end, she is again identified as the mother to Jesus because of what happens at the cross and the burial, especially here in John. So... You're like, why would they distance her away from Jesus and then bring her back? Well, it's because of this incident. It's very possible they were doing that because, let's go to Mark 3. Or actually, we're in Matthew. Let's just flip over to 12. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> you, you may not be. So let's go to 1246. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother... And brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. And one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But he answered, said to, to, to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hands towards the disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whomever will, who, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now, that's interesting. You're like, why would Jesus do that? I'll give you the answer here in just a second. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark 3. So 
So, Mark 3, 31 through 35 says, Then his brothers and his mother came standing outside, and they sent to him, calling him. And the multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle to those who were standing about him and said, These are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does, whoever does the will of my, of my God is my brother, my sister, and mother. All right. It's possible that even, because you're going to see this in John, that her agenda started going one direction and his brother's agenda started going a, a, another direction and had nothing to do with what he was doing. All right? And I'm going to show you that here in John. Her agenda was different than his. And he continues on with his heavenly father's business. Back to the book of John. Back in the book of John, he has to say to her, not mother, but he says woman. <laughs> now, today we read that, we're like, well, that was disrespectful for him to say that. Actually, it was, you know, he was being honoring to her. It's like saying, dear lady. <laughs> But you notice he didn't call her mother. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Her agenda was different than his agenda, and he, of course, continued on with his father's business. The others see her as a woman in the ministry in the end of the gospel story as well. And we already looked at uh, Mark fifteen forty one. All right. So let me just hash this out explain it to you. The scholars believe that it's very possible that when the brothers, because we saw this in John, didn't believe in him. The mother was concerned about things that had nothing to do with the kingdom business. So they start talking about her at a distance, talking about her and put, puts her to a distance from him. But in the end, she comes back and plays a, 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 a big role in what happened at the crucifixion and burial, and she comes back in to play. And she is now recognized as one of the men, women in the ministry. And that could be what the Bible's doing and what the gospel writers are doing. Interesting, isn't it? Okay. Now, back to John. John, what is he doing in this passage? He's focusing right on her. Let's read the next two verses. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, see, John's recognizing that this is his biological mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, again, woman. That's, re that's saying, sweet lady, dear lady, right? Behold your son. We'll stop there. So when he saw her, it's a parsimple, it's in the era, so it just happened. The disciple whom he loved, it's a verb, it's in the uh, imperfect tense, uh, meaning that, uh, uh, meaning that it, during this event, I find that interesting, I don't know what to make of that. While she was standing there, it's a parsimple. Now this is interesting, it's in the perfect tense. <laughs> okay, well, it made scripture, that's interesting. And then he says to them, it's a verb and it's present, which is what... John does when they start speaking you're back to real time all right don't really know what to make of the Greek grammar but we'll move forward so who we believe to be John right the, as the disciple who uh, the disciple whom he loved he comes out of nowhere in these with these four women and soldiers back in verse 23 we saw that there was four soldiers there now John mentions there's four women and then all of a sudden he shows up John's there, right? Who we believe is John. Who had not been heard from since the dinner table where Judas makes his move to in his betrayal, right? So we can go back to 13, 21 through 30. We can look at that, but just for time's sake, we won't. You can go back and read that. And yes, this is the one whom he loved that leaned against his breast. But I believe he was mentioned in the high priest trials as the other disciple. Now you can go back and look at 18, 15 through 16, and you can see that. And that's where John and Peter follow him 
after, um, after his arrest. But then they eventually scattered, which the scholar is going to make a point here about that. Eventually, everything that Jesus said was going to happen did happen. Our scholar has a first-person version of these two verses to help us modern-day readers make sense of the section of Scripture. And here it is. Wrong book. I was grabbing the Greek book, not the scholar book. All right. Now, this is interesting. I, I, thought, I, thought, uh, I thought he did a real good job in doing this. <coughs> These two scriptures we're looking at, it could be translated like this. He turns it into first person because John's writing in third person about himself, right? Now, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and sister and his mother and Mary Clopas and Mary Magdalene. So Jesus, seeing his mother standing there, said to her, Woman, look, your son. Then he said to me, Look, your mother. And from that hour, I took her to my own home. Makes more sense, right, to us in the modern day, you know, modern day people and how we write and talk. All right. Very interesting. So he's saying to, to, to this Beloved disciple, who what we take as John, this is now your mother, you take her and take care of her. Again, Jesus refers to his mother as woman, we talked about that, and we will see her, and we will now see her become John's, or the, the, another person's mother who's going to take care of her, verse 27, verse 27, here it is. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother, and from that hour, that disciple, or how um, Michael did it, if you're talking, if he, if he was talking to first person, says, And I took her home to my own home. All right. Very interesting. Uh, he said, is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's uh, again, in the, in the present tense, and then John took her, verb is in it, the heiress, makes sense. Past tense, it happened. Moving on. So Peter and the other disciple, who we believe is John, will in fact fulfill what Jesus has predicted in the garden when they were to scatter and were to go back to their homes. All right? So John is there, we believe, right? So we believe John is there, but John is also going to leave and leave him alone, like he, 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 he predicted. In 1632, Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and has come, that you will scatter each one to his own and will leave me alone, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. All right. And then we go back to 18, 8 and 15. This is where he's being arrested. And Jesus says this, And Jesus answered, I had told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. Go to verse 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did the other disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went in with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. So, it is true that those two disciples followed him, but eventually what happened to Peter? Prophecy got fulfilled, and he got out of there. What happens to John? He sticks it out, but eventually what does he do? He has to walk away from the cross and take care of Jesus' mother. All right, so, and of course, this followed, they followed him for a little while after the arrest. Some argue that this beloved disciple could be another brother of Jesus. Now, this is interesting, who may have started to believe, and he is turning her over to his care. And that's the modern-day scholarship, and that's what they are pointing at. There could be more here to explain of what's actually going on. I find it interesting, but the interesting thing about the traditional understanding is you can't disprove it. <laughs> yeah. So, as a modern-day Bible teacher, if you can't disprove it, what does it matter what I think? It doesn't matter what I think. All that matters is the truth. <laughs> and all that matters is Jesus paid for us. And if we know what the Word of God says, we're much better off than people who don't know what the Word of God is. 
And like I preached this morning, know all that you can know, just make sure you're operating the love that held them on that cross. Amen? Amen. So it's interesting. That's very interesting. Going on with this, this would make more natural sense. But I still believe it was John who took over the care because she was one of the lady disciples who followed and ministered to him. <laughs> Amen? That's how I take it. I could be wrong. Praise be to God. I could be wrong. Well, here we go. Now, me and the scholar, you know, I totally respect him, and I, I, res I respect the modern-day scholars. Here we go. I agree with our scholar that this disciple is obedient, whether he really was Jesus' brother or it was the, the, the disciple John, whoever this is. All right. And this is the hour that Jesus was telling them all about. What hour was that? The hour of crucifixion. Let's go back to 7.30. 7.30 says, Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. 8.20 says, And these words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid a hand on him, for his, for his hour had not yet come. Let's go to 12.23. And Jesus answered, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Go to 27 of chapter 12. And now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Go to 13.1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, and he should depart from this world to be to, to the Father, having loved his own whom were in the world, he loved them to the end. Go to 17.1. Jesus is now addressing the Father in his prayer. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may, may also glorify you. Yes, I mix those words up because part of this is the John W. Meadows version of the New King James. All right. So, <laughs> there we go. All right. So, I agree with the scholar 100%. Whoever this disciple is, he's completely obedient to the Lord and Savior and the Master. He takes over the care of Jesus' mother. And the hour that he took her from the cross to take care of her was the hour of the cross, the hour that Jesus was going to die and go back to the Father. And we will hear from him again, right? Because just like Mary Magdalene is now being mentioned, he's going to be mentioned again as well in the resurrection. And I know we're about to go into the fall, and it's not April or March where we talk about Easter, and we talk about you know, when it's Easter, and we talk about the resurrection Sunday. But here it is. Let's go back to 22 through 10. Then she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away our Lord out of the temple, and I do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they ran; they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. That's why they believe that John was younger. Or if this is a younger brother of Jesus. All right. And he stooped down and looked and saw the linen laying there, and yet... He did not go in. Then Simon Peter came and followed him and went into the tomb. And they saw the linen cloth lying there. And the handkerchief had been around his head, not lying there, or not lying with the, with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Now, before I move on, when we get to this next year, <laughs> Jesus simply came through the clothing but the handkerchief he took off his face and folded and put it to the side. Ain't that interesting? Look up the Shroud of Torn. You want to talk about conspiracy stuff that's interesting? <laughs> Look into that. Going on. The handkerchief had been around his head, not lying where the linen was, is where we left off, had folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who we believe is John, who came to the tomb first, 
went in also and saw and believed. What's the big word in John? Believed, yeah. All right. As for the... Uh, for. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. What did I say this morning? Jesus told them about the awful, horrible news that's about to happen to him, and they couldn't comprehend it. They psychologically, like today, could not handle what Jesus told them. But then he said, by the way, I'm going to rise again in three days. You see them having trouble still here, believing what Jesus said? Yeah, moving on. Then the other, then the disciple uh, went uh, went away to their own homes. What did Jesus say? You're all going to leave me and go back to your homes. Then, of course, Mary Magdalene comes into this text and goes on from there. If you look at twenty one seven, here's the other disciple. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, "Is it is the Lord?" Now, when Simon Peter uh, uh, heard that it was the Lord, he he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. I think that verse is funny. Jesus is here? Let me grab my coat and jump in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah, he may, maybe he's like us guys who are, you know, there's no ladies around, so we'll take our shirt off while we're out working. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that could be what it was. Now let's go to the very end of the gospel. Then Peter, verse 20 through 25, chapter 21. Then Peter turned around and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following and also who had leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, who is the one who portrays you? Peter, seeing him, seeing him said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. These, then the, the, then the, this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that you would not die. But if I will that he re- remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testified these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And, and, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which which if they were written one by one, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Amen. Now you see right there, he switched the first person. He's letting you know, the disciple, the other disciple, this is me writing this book. Now, I know this teaching is going a little long, but I'm going to show you guys something cool. See if I can find it. Where is it at? Go to verse thirty-five of our, our of our, our of our of chapter uh, nineteen. John, who I believe is John, in this chapter, in the next chapter, and of course what we just saw in the last chapter, all of a sudden he starts talking to us. Right after the whole crucifixion scene, he goes. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. John starts directly speaking to us, the readers. Isn't that neat? We're going to start seeing that. Who's the other disciple? Who's the disciple whom he loved? I believe it's John. It's very... The one thing that, that, that people who take the traditional view and modern-day scholars have to agree on, whoever wrote this is the other disciple, or definitely, most definitely, because it's very plain and clear, he is the disciple whom Jesus loved. And what do we do? We love him, too, because he first loved us. And that's some more Johnian language there. Amen? Amen. All right. We'll leave it at that.